Amen. So in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, of course, this is uh, David here offering for the temple, his thanksgiving, his prayer. This is the basically the end of David's life. He's handing over the, the, kings, uh, the keys of the kingdom, so to speak, over to his son Solomon. <clears throat> and he makes this prayer here, and there's some great truths in it. And really what I want to focus in on is there in verse 13 where it says, <clears throat> Now therefore our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. And what I want to talk to you about tonight is the source and result of thankfulness. The, the source, what is the source of thankfulness? And not only that, but what are the results of thankfulness? What are the results of thankfulness in your life? Now keep something in 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 29, if you would. But let's turn over to James uh, chapter 1. James chapter 1 tonight. Keep something there in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. <clears throat> but he says there, Now therefore... Uh, 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 our God, we thank thee. So there's a therefore there. There's a reason why uh, David here is thanking God. And it's found there in those uh, preceding verses, of course. And really what we see in those verses, if we were paying attention while the scripture was being read, is that David had an understanding of the source of thankfulness. And that was found in the fact that understand, he understood that all things come from God. Every, everything that David had in his life, he understood that it came from the Lord. And that's something that we need to realize as well. Everything that we have in our life that uh, is good and right and just and holy, uh, that comes from God. And that's reiterated here in James chapter 1, if you look at verse 17, where it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, variableness nor, neither shadow of turning. So the Bible says that every good gift, every perfect gift that we have comes down from God. That God is what uh, is the one who gives us all of, uh, of the things in life that are good, or all the things that are perfect or whole and complete in our lives. That all comes from God, and that's something that people really need to understand in their life, whether they realize that or not. You know, and Job said that, you know, that, that uh, the, even the, the breath of all mankind is in God's hand. Right. That uh, even the person who would take that same breath that God gives and curse the Lord or blaspheme the Lord or uh, magnify himself or puff himself up, even that person is given that very breath by which he does that is given to him by God. Right. So every good thing that we have in this life comes down from the Father. And that's something that uh, David understood very well. If you would turn back there to First uh, <coughs> Chronicles 29. <clears throat> the Bible says in uh, Deuteronomy 8, if, if you recall just a few weeks ago, it says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. This was the commandments that Moses was giving to the children of Israel. And he said, You're going to remember God. Don't forget God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Yeah. See, God, they, Moses didn't want the people to go over into Israel and forget about God when they started to accumulate all this wealth and things. When all the good things started to come into their life. When all the blessings of God started to come in their life. They didn't want... Uh, Moses didn't want the children of Israel to begin to think that, that by their own hand they had gotten this wealth. But they wanted him to understand to remember and to be reminded. And that's the purpose of this sermon. And that's really the purpose of this holiday is to, re be rem to remember that it is the Lord God that gives us all good things in this life. <clears throat> and we should never forget the goodness of God. You know, we, we set aside this one day and how quickly we forget the goodness of God. It, 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 so, it just goes so quickly. And I should have had you stay in the New Testament, but let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And if we could just at least set a time aside at least once in the year to really drive this home and understand, and maybe it'll carry us uh, you know, throughout the other uh, times of the year to, to be reminded that every good thing that we have in this life comes from God. If you're there in 1 Corinthians 4, you're turning there, I'm going to remind you what it says in Psalm 24. It says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's, meaning everything there is. You know, everything that's on the earth and in the earth and under the earth and above the earth is God's. Right. It, it's His to give to whomsoever He will. He says the world and they that dwell therein, even we ourselves belong to God. You know, we, we are created in His image. Uh, everything that we have in this life comes down from the Father. If you're there in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse 6, it says... And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred of myself and to Apollos for your sakes. They may learn, uh, uh, you may learn in us not to think above men that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against the other. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? 
Now, of course, in the context here, you know, Paul's trying to remind these people uh, not to be puffed up for one person above another, not to play, play favorites or pick sides. Uh, but really what I want to focus in there is verse 7 where it says, you know, uh, what hast thou that thou didst not receive? You know, and this is the time of year we should really stop and think about that. We should think about all the good things that we have and, and think, well, where do we receive this? How do we come across this? And how do we get this in our life? You know, if there's some blessing or some good thing in our life, how is it that you came to have that? What, how did you come to receive that in your life? You, can't, you got that through God. Whether you're willing to acknowledge that or not, every good thing that came into your life, God allowed it to happen. Yeah, <clears throat> so <clears throat> what we see is that, in, and if you would, keep something in, uh, uh, actually turn over to 2 Timothy while you're there. <clears throat> and this seems rather obvious. You know, this seems like a pretty obvious, you know, uh, statement to make that every good thing in your life comes from God and that everything that we have is given to us of God and that we should be mindful of that. It's, a v it's very obvious, isn't it? But it's also very ignored. It's something that people take for granted all the time. And the perfect example of that is tomorrow's big, you know, holiday, quote unquote. We're going to go right in from a, a, from a day of, th of celebrating thankfulness into a day of you know, trying to get the best deal on all the things that, on a bunch of junk that we don't need. You know, Black Friday, where, you know, we're going right from a season of thankfulness right into a season where nothing but covetousness is being promoted. And I know I preached about this on Sunday as well, and I won't go off on that. But the point being is that, you know, to sit up, get up here and say, hey, you should be thankful to God for every good thing in your life. That seems rather obvious, and it is. But it's also extremely ignored in our society. And, you know, we should watch our own hearts and make sure, you know, that not just one day or a year are we thankful for the things that God has given us. But every single day we get up, we can thank God for so many of the blessings that he gives us. I mean, just our health alone. Just be able to, walk, to wake up and open your eyes in the morning and put, your, you know, put two feet on the floor and stand upright. Right. And, and be able to go out and do any kind of labor or any kind of work. You should thank God for that. Because yeah. you don't know when, you know, a day, you know, thou knowest not what a day shall bring forth. You know, that could end like that. You could wake up the next day with some ailment. And, and, and so we should always be thankful every day. And, and again, it's obvious, but it's extremely ignored. And what we see today is a, uh, a spirit of unthankfulness in this country and, and in this world even. And really what that is, you know, when somebody has an unthankful spirit, what that is indicative of is, is of unholiness. You know, it's, it's a lack of acknowledging God. When people become unthankful, you know, it's because they're not acknowledging God. They're not uh, recognizing that every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. They choose to ignore that. And when we stop being thankful and grateful to God for the things that he has given us, that's when we become unholy as individuals and unholy as, as a society. And if you would, uh, I'll remind you, you're going to 2 Timothy chapter 3, but I'll remind you what it says in Romans 1. You know, if you've been a faithful word very long, you know what Romans 1 is all about. It's about how people become a reprobate, rejected of God. And it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, When they knew God, they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. They understood that, you know, hey, yeah, there's a God, you know, He's there, uh, you know, He gives us good things, but we're not going to glorify Him as God. We're not going to give thanks to God. They glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. That was one of their you know, you know, major uh, character flaws. That's what led them down that road to becoming a, a, you know, rejected of the Lord, to become a reprobate, as the Bible calls it. When they knew who God was, and they said, yeah, I understand God gives me good things, but I'm not going to glorify him as God. They have an unthankful spirit. And an unthankful spirit you know, is what leads to them becoming vain in their imaginations and leads what, uh, individuals to becoming unholy, unthankful, ungrateful. And as individuals and as societies, if you're there in 2 Timothy chapter 3, look at verse 1. <coughs> this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, proud, uh, boasters, proud, blasphemer, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. That's one of these end times attitudes that we see. We see and we look around today and we can easily identify uh, the individuals that are covetous, that are just chasing after things that they don't need, that they don't deserve, that they can't afford. And everyone's just coveting everything that's out there and they just want more and more and more. They're lovers of their own selves. People are just concerned about themselves and nobody else. What's in it for them? What can they get out of it? They are boasters, proud. I mean, this is everywhere. Blasphemers. This is everywhere. 
They're disobedient to parents, the Bible says. And what else are they? They're unthankful. So don't think that being uh, an unthankful person is a light thing. That, you know, well, why do we have to have the obligatory Thanksgiving Day sermon? Why do we have to even have this day called Thanksgiving? Why do we have to be reminded to be thankful to God? Because not being thankful is an unholy thing. And it's something that, you know, will lead people down a dark path if they're not careful. Now, if you would, uh, <coughs> let's go back to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 29. So unthankfulness, you know, it's not just a form of selfishness. You know, unthankfulness is more than that. It's not just a poor attitude. It's even, it is that, but it's also more than that. What unthankfulness is, <coughs> in some instances, is it's an outward manifestation of an inward disregard of God's goodness. That's what unthankfulness is. When you're unthankful, it's you showing God and anybody else who's paying attention that you have an inward disregard for God's goodness. You're inwardly, you're saying, you know what? I know God, but I'm not going to glorify him as God. I'm not going to be thankful to him. That's what's within, and it manifests itself by you becoming an unthankful person. <laughs> you know, and it, it's, a, it's part of our sinful condition. I mean, we think about with our own children. You know, we have to teach our kids to say thank you, don't we? You know, and, they, they, and oftentimes they won't. I mean, usually it's because they're shy if it's some stranger or something. They get a compliment out there. My, my kids get compliments from time to time. I'm not saying all the time. Every now and then they get a compliment. You know, they'll say, oh, your daughter this, or oh, your daughter that. And I'll look at her and she'll be all, you know. And I'll say, say thank you. Thank you. You know. <laughs> we have to teach thankfulness. We have to teach uh, kids to acknowledge compliments or acknowledge when people do nice things for them and, and to be grateful and to be humble in that way. Uh, because our natural inclination is to not be thankful. And what happens is, is if we develop that poor attitude, if we develop that selfishness, is that that inward disregard for God begins to show. And it shows through un, uh, ingratitude. So <coughs> you're there in First Chronicles chapter 29. We see, first of all, really what I wanted to point out, I'm not going to go long tonight, but the, the, main, you know, the, the first part of the sermon is the source of thankfulness. What is the source of thankfulness? What's going to make us a thankful people? It's acknowledging God. It's just stop me. It's as simple as that. It, it, what's going to make us thankful is to stop and realize that we don't deserve all the good things that are in our life. Right. You, don't, you don't deserve any of it. You know, God is, God is merciful and long-suffering. I mean, if we all got what we deserved, you know, the Bible says there is none good. Yeah. There's none righteous. No, not one. There's not a just man upon the earth and sinneth not. That all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. You know, every single person in this room and every single person on this earth deserves only one thing. And that's, that's righteous judgment by a righteous and holy God. Amen. And God is merciful and long-suffering towards us and is very great, uh, gracious towards us. And that's why we should understand that, that you know, when we understand that, that is the source of us becoming a thankful people, of realizing that he has not re, you know, repaid us according to our iniquities and that he has been very merciful to us. So that's the source of it. But the title of the sermon is The Source of Thankfulness and the Results of Thankfulness. So what... When we acknowledge the, the source of thankfulness and, and, and we acknowledge that in our hearts, what does that result in? What does that lead to? How can we look at our own lives and, and, and see whether or not we're really thankful as individuals? And really, uh, thankfulness, one of the things it results in is humility. I mean, when we start to understand that, uh, <coughs> you know, that, uh, how, how gracious God has been to us and, that, and not requiring us uh, of our sins, not repaying us our sins, and giving us what we deserve, you know, that should bring about a spirit of humility in an individual. And that's what results, uh, that's what the results of thankfulness are in a person's life, is a, a spirit of humility. If you're there in First Chronicles 29, you'll see that in David's prayer here. <coughs> he says there, again, picking it up in verse 13, where he says, Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. What does he say in verse 14? But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things, for all things come of thee, and even of thine own hand have we given thee. So he says, look, we praise God, we're thankful to God. And then he goes on and he says this, but who am I? And what is my people? That's a spirit of humility. That's somebody saying, you know, I, you, know you could see it right there in this passage. He's praising God. He's giving gratefulness. He's, he's grateful to God. He's thanking God. And what's the, what's the result? 
a very hu humble spirit, acknowledging the fact that, you know, we're really nobody. I'm really no one. It's not of my own, uh, it's not of our own goodness. It, it's none of that. It's all of God. <coughs> he says in verse 15, For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers, our days on the earth, are, uh, and our, our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. So we see that thankfulness, its source is found when we begin to acknowledge God. That's what we're, that is the source of thankfulness, understanding that all good things come from Him. That results in humility, a, a, a low view of oneself. I'm not saying you have to walk around with sackcloth and ashes on your head and, and, and whip yourself, but you know, there ought to be a spirit of humility in our life that we display towards other, uh, other people and, 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 uh, and that, you know, that is a result of being a thankful person. <coughs> and one of the things you say, well, how do I become a more humble person? I want to be, you know, I want, I want to be a thankful person. You know, I want to be more humble. I want that in my life. One of the things you need to do, I think for some, you know, many of us, is we need to reflect on the past. And I think that's what David kind of does here in verse 15. He says, For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. What's he doing? He's looking back on the past and he's saying, Look, we're just strangers. Our fathers were just sojourners. We're nobodies. And really, that's what we need to do in our own lives. As were all our fathers. We, know we need to consider our past. And that's a, that's a spirit of humility. Somebody can look back and, and look at where they came from and say, oh yeah, I remember when I, I came from nothing. You know, I was, you know, when God found me, like I've said often from this pulpit, when you got saved, God didn't get a bargain. You know, God didn't get this great deal when he got you. Okay, or me, or any of us. Right. What he got was a sinner with, with, with problems. And you know, the older we were when we got saved, probably the more problems we had. Lesson being, kids, get saved now and start living for God early. So you don't have to go through all that. Take it from people that have already done it. <clears throat> but he's saying, look, you know, consider the pastor. Consider the goodness of God thus far in your life. Consider how good God has been to you up until this point in your life. Look back. You know, you, if, if, if you're sitting here kind of beating yourself up, feeling like you're not going anywhere in life, maybe you should look back and see how far God has taken you already. Look at all the great things God has already done for you. Be a thankful person. And that would result in humility. Um, excuse me, in some humility. Do it in your life. You could even look back into the lives of previous generations. You know, maybe you're a young person who's growing up in a Christian home. Maybe you're a second, third generation Christian. You know, you could look back into the, into the previous lives of your, you know, your parents and your grandparents and hopefully even beyond that and be thankful, just like David. You know, he said, hey, as we're all our fathers, and you can begin to consider how, how gracious God has been through these generations to you to have given you godly uh, role models and godly parents in your life to guide you in the right way. So <laughs> thankfulness results in humility. And if we would humble ourselves, you know, we would begin to reflect on the past. And not only that, if we would be a humble people, we would begin to consider the future. He says there in verse 15, he says, For we are strangers before the insurgener, uh, sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. I mean, he's talk, he, what he's saying is here is that, hey, you know, life is fleeting. Life goes by like that. Life goes by quick. And I know the younger we are, the less we acknowledge that. Or let, we'll hear people say that, you know, that are older, and we'll think, oh, that's not true. And, and to be perfectly honest, I've only realized how true that is, you know, in these last few years, in these last, you know, less, you know, five or ten years about you say, oh, life, you know, I hear life goes by fast, but the, the longer you live, the quicker it seems to go, I'm finding out. <clears throat> you know, you'll be a more thankful person when you start to realize how fleeting life is, how quickly life goes by, how quickly these things pass away. You know, and one thing that's really taught me this is having children. I think this is why this has really dawned on me more, more you know, recently is the fact of I, that I have children, you know, that we've got, we're on our fourth kid, you know, and I'm starting to realize all the things I, I've kind of missed out on the, on the first three. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a bad father or anything, but you kind of take it for granted a little bit. You can say, oh, they're cute. They, they're learning to walk and they're, they're saying things. And then you have an eight-year-old all of a sudden and they're still cute in their eight-year-old way, right? <laughs> but you, you realize, you know, how fleeting that was. And they were just this little tiny person you know, now you've got, now I've got my youngest one. I'm, I'm trying to spend more time, you know, just enjoying this part of life 
where she's just this little tiny baby and and uh, <coughs> and just really soaking that in. So that's one thing that's kind of taught me that is that you know life is fleeting; it goes by fast. You know, kids having children has taught me that. You know, you see them grow up quick. And if we would realize that, if we would consider the future, if we would stop and just think about how quickly life goes by, we'd probably be more thankful for the things that we have, Amen. the good things that God has given us, and would probably cause us to be a more humble people. Now, I don't want to try and get too hokey or wax too eloquent up here, but I like quotes. I like to go and sometimes I'll go read a lot of different quotes from different people on different subjects. And one quote I, I read when I was writing a sermon I, really, I wanted to read uh, this man said, we can only be said to be alive in those moments when our hearts are conscious of our treasures. We can only be said to be alive in those moments when our hearts are conscious, conscious of our treasures. And that's, you know, that's when you really feel alive, is when you're really stopping and really reflecting on the good things that God has given you, all the treasures that you have in this life. And if you just spend your life coveting and wanting the next greatest thing and, and, and always and not being grateful or being thankful, life's going to pass you by. And what really matters in life, it, 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 you're not even going to experience it. You're, those, those moments are going are to be gone. It's fleeting. <clears throat> you know, a life of ingratitude isn't worth living, in my opinion. It, it's not, it, can you even really call it a life? Uh, where it's just life is just all about me, what I want, what I'm going to get, my selfishness. My ungratefulness, that's not, that's not any kind of a life to live. And, and, and it results in a very proud and arrogant attitude. So, you know, we need to under, understand that the source of all good things comes from God. Amen. And when we do that, we can start to see the results of it in our life. And one of the things that's going to result in is a spirit of humility that causes us to reflect on where we've come from and, com and cause us to reflect on how quickly this life is going to be by, go by and to stop and cherish the things that really matter in this life. Friends, family, church, serving God. It's not about things. You know, people get so caught up in stuff and things. And, and things go and things <laughs> rot and decay. And, and the things that we think we are going to make life full, they, they, they turn out to be just as vain as anything else. Right. And it's the people, it's the relationships that we have in this life that matter. So we see, first of all, and I'll, I'll start to wrap this up. <coughs> But thankfulness results in humility. And not only that, but thankfulness, if we have it in our life, is going to result in praise, in the praise of God. <coughs> and you find that in verse 16. <coughs> you realize uh, 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 when you underst and understand that all good things come from God. All things come from God. It says in verse, th verse 16, all this store, he said in verse 16, <coughs> O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name cometh of thine own hand. And all is thine own. David's acknowledging every, even the things that he wants to do for God are the things that are, are given to him of God. He's saying we're going to build this great house for God, this temple for God. And the irony is, is God's the one that gave us all the ability to do it anyway. That, that, and you have to realize that all things come from God. And that's going to result in praise. You know, when you start to, even the praise that God gives you, the praise that God gives you on your lips, God gives you that. Right. He gives you the ability to do that. <clears throat> and really, praise is one of the few things uh, that you can give God that really, you know, He gives you the ability. But you could choose whether or not you want to praise God. You could choose whether or not you want to glorify God in your life. That's up to you. And really, that's one of the few things in life that God, you know, you could really say comes from you. I mean, we understand the ability to praise God is given to us of God. But not everybody does that. Not everybody chooses to praise God. Not everybody cho chooses to acknowledge God and glorify God. But if we do that, we have to, under, you know, that's one of the few things, your uh, praise to God is one of the few things in life that c you could say you genuinely gave to God of your own. Does that make sense? That you can give God uh, something that is truly from your own heart. And that's thanking Him, praising Him. And it's best given in the form of praise. And that's something that David understood. If you look here in verse 20, And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord and the king. And they sacrificed sacrifices unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord 
on the morrow after that day, even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, a thousand lambs, and their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. <clears throat> so David, you know, he was one that understood that, you know, thankfulness is something that results in praise, and he worships God here. And the last point I want to make tonight is the fact that thankfulness, you know, what else, it, you know, it's going to result in humility. It's going to result in you giving God the glory. It's going to result in giving you God praise. But it's also going to result in you enjoying God's blessings. You know, I think sometimes God withholds blessings for us because we're not going to be grateful for it. And when he sees a person that he knows is thankful and knows a person that's going to be grateful for the good things that, God, uh, that he's going to give them, he decides to give them more. Mm -hmm. <coughs> You see, thankfulness results in enjoying God's blessings. Look there in verse 22. Verse 22. And did eat and drink before the Lord on that day with great gladness. That's, that reminds me of, some, of a particular day. Kind of reminds me of today a little bit, doesn't it? When we did eat and drink before the Lord with great gladness. The Bible says, "A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many of the of the of many wicked." You know, sometimes God doesn't give uh, the feast. God doesn't give the blessing. God doesn't give all that because people are unthankful, and unthankful people they'll never truly enjoy or be satisfied with anything God gives them. So God just says, "Well, what's the point? You're not going to be satisfied with it anyway." <coughs> And really, I just want to close with this thought that if you want God's blessing in your life, that if you want God to give you more of his goodness, you know, you got to be thankful for the, the stuff that he already does give you. Be thankful for the goodness that he has already shown in your life. And then he'll give you more. You know, God has given us our portion to enjoy in this life. That's what it says in Ecclesiastes. And I won't, I won't turn there for the sake of time, but, you know, God has given us a portion to enjoy this life. You know, the Bible says... You know, let's just turn there. It's one more passage. I, I don't think I don't think I'm losing everybody. We'll we'll, we'll hang on here. Amen. Ecclesiastes, chapter. Where are we going? Ecclesiastes chapter two. <clears throat> let's just read this together. Ecclesiastes chapter twenty-two and verse twenty-four. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes twenty, 20 chapter two verse twenty-four, there is nothing better for a man. <clears throat> than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in, in his labor. This I saw that it was also from the hand uh, of God. For who can eat, who else can hasten here unto more than I? Now that's not a challenge. Okay, Don't take him up on that. <laughs> this isn't an eating challenge. He's saying, look, I, if anyone was able to do it, it was King Solomon who wrote this book. Right. And he had the ability to just try everything there was to be tried and have all these things in abundance. And he says in verse 26, For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give him that is good before God. You know, God gives more to those that are good. God gives more to those that are grateful and thankful for what they have. And really all God expects in return is for you to be thankful. And I think God, God would love to give us more. and God would love to bless us more. And I'm not saying physical things. I'm saying a spirit of joy and peace and contentment, you know, uh, you know, relationships, <coughs> significant, meaningful relationships in our lives with our families and our friends and our church, you know, fellow church members, you know, in service for God. God wants to bless us with these things, these spiritual blessings. <coughs> but all, and he wants to, but he, you know, he wants us to be thankful for that. He wants to hear thanks. You know, no one wants to do something nice for their, for their child or somebody. And they just have them be like, you know, give them an attitude. I mean, are you going to, you want to do something nice for somebody like, oh, thanks. You, I might, you really think you're going to do anything nice for that person again? I mean, you might just because you have the character, but it does, you're not going to feel motivated to do it. You know, sometimes you think, boy, you know, you just think of somebody, you get them a gift, give it to them. And, and you know, I've never had it happen. Everyone's, anytime I've ever done that, they've been like, oh, thanks. Wow, they're surprised. I've had people do that to me. So, wow, I didn't see that coming. Thank you. And it was genuine and sincere. But what if I had just been like, I didn't want this. <laughs> hey, did you, uh, did you keep the receipt? <laughs> you know? 
This kind of an attitude, right? That's the last gift you're ever going to get from me, if that's your attitude. And it's the same way with God. And when God wants to bless us with all these great things, and he just sees us down here like, not even thankful for what he has done for us. Not even thankful for what we already do have. Why is he going to give us more? Just so we can be more, uh, a, a more ungrateful person? I don't think so. So we have to understand something. The source of all thankfulness, what it, where does it come from? It comes from understanding that all good things from, come from God. When we understand that, then we become a thankful people. And that manifests in us becoming uh, a more humble people. It, become, it results in us be becoming a people that give praise and glory to God. And it results in us getting to enjoy God's blessings as well. And that's a sincere spirit of, of thanks. You know, that, that stems from understanding that the that source of all good things is from the Lord. You want to be a sincere person who, who genuinely thanks God and is, you have to understand something. All good things come from God. Let's go ahead and pray.